Jane Lesko, and some of the pieces you are about to hear come from a pandemic collaboration project of mine called September Solo Cello. September Solo Cello definitely bore out of isolation. As I found myself deeply yearning to play chamber music with friends, I was trying to think of ways to find that fun, invigorating, collaborative spirit while keeping everyone safe and healthy. I put out an ask on social media, wondering if there were any composers who would be interested in collaborating with me and creating miniatures for solo cello. I thought perhaps we could have some fun leaning into the limitations that existed, taking advantage of our virtual reality to work with people all across the world that we wouldn't normally get to work with, and also sharing the pieces publicly on Instagram to make them as accessible and easy to find as possible. I never dreamed that it would turn into the project that it did, ultimately resulting in over 20 collaborations with composers all across the world and expressing ourselves through musical reflections on the pandemic, on social justice issues, on things that we were missing, and so much more. The four pieces that you're going to hear are vastly different from one another. Ryan Wilmot's When I Have Fear, this Fears That I May Cease to Be takes its title from the poem of the same name by W.B. Yeats and is a reflection on mortality. India Gailey's three-part piece, Mountain Weeps, is a commentary on the severity of climate change, particularly on glacial environments. Giancarlo Latta's Sarabande is based on an improvisation he created on his violin early on in the pandemic and developed for the cello later on, pairing it with J.S. Bach's dark, deeply haunting and somber Fifth Suite Sarabande. Finally, Matthias McIntyre's Footsteps is paired with a track in which the track is largely made up of natural sounds that I myself recorded on the trails I frequent daily near my home in Canada, including my own footsteps. Hiking for me has been a coping mechanism throughout this time, and I know that this is a piece that will always bring me back to the peace and tranquility that I find in the woods. Each of these pieces will have lasting meaning for me, both on reflecting in this time and on these glorious collaborations we were able to have despite the distance between us.
Hi, I'm Peter Halstead. My wife Kathy and I started Tibbet Rise. Arlen commissioned the piece that she just played from Ryan Wilmot. Ryan calls it Fears I May Cease to Be after the Keats poem. In the poem, Keats worries that he'll die before he's written everything that he has on his mind. Keats's fears of death weren't hypothetical. He knew he had tuberculosis and he was pre-med. He knew it would kill him like it had killed two members of his family already. Three years, in fact, after he read it, he was dead. He was 25. The poem itself wasn't published for 30 years. But although Keats speaks of nothingness, in fact, he loved nothingness. He preferred mystery and doubt. He found fact and reason irritating. For him, emotions were the real thing, not logic. The fact that we all come to nothing in the end is in fact reassuring for Keats. It's a happy ending for him. The fair creature that Keats mentions is a girl he hasn't met yet. He has a lot of love in him but he has no one to give it to so far. He finally met Fanny Braun, his bright star, eight months later. There are three words we didn't use much anymore, which I want to explain. The word gleaned means harvested. Charactery means characters, the letters which make up poems. Garners are granaries where they keep the grain. Here's the poem. When I have fears that I may cease to be, before my pen has gleaned my teeming brain, before my high-piled books and character hold like rich garners the full ripened grain, when I behold upon the night's starred face huge cloudy symbols of a high romance and think that I may never live to trace their shadows with the magic hand of chance. And when I feel fair creature only of an hour, that I shall never look upon thee more, never relish in the fairy power of unreflecting love, then on the shore of the wide world, I stand alone and think to love and fame, to nothingness, do sink.